Hello, I'm Richard Vobes and I'm on another walk. Today I'm exploring Henfield and I'm starting up by St Peter's Church which is a delightful church and it's sort of on a hill because Henfield is actually on a ridge in the Weald of Sussex. It's about uh, 10 miles from Horsham and the same sort of distance from um, Brighton, about 15. And beside me is the wonderful tower and nave of St Peter's. I started here because Henfield, or should that be Hamfield, or various derivations of that name, means a high open clearing. And that's really what is here in Henfield, or was here back in the Saxon times. And there was a church, some form of church here in 770 AD. Of course, now we see this very delightful 13th century church with various modern uh, adjustments and changes as all churches underwent. But in the Saxon period, there would have been uh, here in the Weald, great forests and bogs, marshes, that sort of thing. And so the settlers would like to have found somewhere that they could clear and erect their little church, which they did, and have a view of the Weald. And actually from Henfield, you get a terrific view of the South Downs and the surrounding fields as well. Since those Saxon times, the requirement for leather would have been high as a fantastic durable material for many things from shoes to saddles really anything and so the, the tanner business would have been absolutely important and vital to many villages and in Henfield in particular there was quite a proliferation of tanning going on just north of St Peter's is the tan yard, now a pleasant meadow. It must have stunk pretty bad from the Middle Ages onwards. The preparation of leather into hide is a smelly business. Here, an old tanning shed remains, I'm guessing from the Victorian period. Beyond, a pond, no doubt used to soak the raw hides, to clean and soften them, to assist the removal of animal hair. The area is surrounded by Twittons, the Sussex name for passages and footpaths, and Henfield has plenty. Henfield abounds with timber-framed houses, as well as some nice examples of early brick as well. But the timber-framed houses, most of them are Grade 2 listed, and there's about 41, I think, in the actual village including a very beautiful one that is photographed many, many times and I'm no exception. Looking forward to doing it is the cat house here on my left. Beautiful, I think 14th century timber framed building with a traditional thatched roof, as you can see, with cats literally plastered all around it. Everywhere you look, History seeps from the lanes just off the high street. Cottages and houses simply beg to be looked at and adored. The interesting thing about uh, the high street is it's believed to be one of the old drove roads. A drove road is um, a road where sheep were literally driven backwards and forwards, probably to the Downs, the South Downs not being too far away. Here a very grand Georgian house, as you can see, Martin's Lodge. Beautifully rendered with um, pretty good tiles on the roof, I have to say. So as we start our little walk south, I'm going to start outside the White Hart, a beautiful um, timber frame building behind all of those hung tiles and brick and you can see on the top there some Horsham slabs, a sort of sandstone slabby type tile that was used 
frequently in and around Sussex, called Horsham because it came from deposits around the Horsham area, though not necessarily from inside the town of Horsham. It is my hope in some of these videos is to stay in some of the old inns up and down the land when I make them because um, it would be great value to see inside and, and experience what it would be like to have stayed in one of the old coaching inns of the 17th century. Henfield was granted a market from 1234 but there seems to be no activity in that area. It was a modest village. There were no medieval shops or trade guilds. In fact, for me, uh, this is very reminiscent of when my visit to Stenning, in a way, because the, the Sussex tiles are very similar, and the brickwork, and of course the timber framing. And that's not surprising, because Stenning is um, only a few miles away, really, and on the other side of the uh, river, I think it's on the other side of the River Ada, but the building materials would have been identical. And Henfield was known for its brickyards as well as its tanyards, and the bricks and the tiles, obviously from the same sort of clay, and so you get that same feel. The through road was turnpiked in the late 18th century, leading to the construction of two coaching inns, the White Hart and the George the village becoming a staging post between London and Brighton. It's not hard to imagine the coach stopping here for refreshment or just to change the horses. And I can't help but delight in the herringbone infill. Now I'm just approaching an area where according to the literature that I read, there was an animal pound and a pillory and uh, it was opposite Moustow's Manor. Now, I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation. Moustow's Manor is over here. So where I'm standing, apparently, um, here now at a, I think it's a fine Indian dining restaurant behind me, would have been the animal pound, and as I say, the pillory. So if you were a bad lad, you would have been shoved in the pillory and rotten eggs, rotten tomatoes, rotten cabbages, rotten anything. Probably some rotten words would have been hurled at you. This is Golden Square. Although it's not really a square, of course it's now a roundabout and it's where the road divides. The, the Brighton the Brighton Road veers off to the left and the Shoreham Stenning Road veers down to the right. Every village needs needs its common and Henfield has two surviving commons. I think one is called Henfield Heath and the other is the Henfield Common and of course common was uh, a communal grazing area for villagers um, particularly those who didn't own a lot of land um, or have anywhere to place their their sheep or their cattle and it's a bit overgrown now but um, it's always handy to have somewhere where you can just let loose your animals, your livestock, and then bring them in at night. When the railways came in 1861, of course, that brought a lot of um, more building work. The brickyards increased. The uh, Victorians were able to travel up to London. They could commute now. And so you started to see the beginning of a Victorian beginning of the urban sprawl. But then, 105 years later, Dr. Richard Beeching came along with his axe and he pulled up the railway. Very much like in Stenning, he, he prevented the town of Stenning and the village of Henfield really from increasing. And that's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because you take away the line of communication, such as the railway, and suddenly progress almost stops. But I don't know that that in Henfield's case is a bad thing, although I dare say having a railway now would be quite useful for people. But it's prevented in many ways a lot of that urban sprawl that we see in larger towns. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little ramble around Henfield. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, press the bell notification, and you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And give me a comment. If you live in Henfield or you visited Henfield, I'd be very pleased to hear from you. I may have got all my facts wrong, so you're welcome to correct me. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.